Hello, and welcome to the fourth grade channel of Sun Devil Learning Labs. I am Mrs. Khan, and let's get started. All right, so we're going to continue on with main idea, but today we're going to try a little bit something different and dig a little deeper in our knowledge, all right? So let's review main idea, all right? Main idea is what is the text mostly about? And if you look at this image and think of this as your text, right? We've gone over this one if you were with us before. The main idea is a pizza. And what got us there are the details. And those details were the pepperonis, the mushrooms, and the peppers, right? And when we think about how we find our main idea in any type of text, right? We look at our title and our headings. We look at any pictures that are included. We look at words that are repeated, and we reread our first and last sentence, all right? So let's practice that, all right? This passage is titled Super Brain, all right? We're going to read the passage, push pause, right? And then decide what sentence is your main idea and what sentences are your supporting details, all right? So this is titled Super Brain. Your brain is faster and more powerful than a supercomputer. You carry around a three pound mass of wrinkly material in your head that controls every single thing you will ever do. Scientists agree that it is the most complex thing ever discovered. Did you know that your brain generates enough electricity to power a light bulb? Your neurons create and send more messages than all the phones in the entire world. While a single neuron generates only a tiny amount of electricity, all your neurons together can generate enough electricity to power a low wattage light bulb. When you learn, you change the structure of your brain. When you practice your multiplication facts, you are forming new connections along a certain pathway of neurons over and over. These connections enable your brain to form a memory and memorization of those facts occur. From enabling you to think, learn, create, and feel emotions to controlling every blink, breath, and heartbeat, this fantastic control center is your brain. All right, hit pause, reread it as many times as you feel you need to, and then decide what is your main idea and what are your supporting details, all right? All right, so continuing on, here are our answers, all right? I have in red is our main idea, and in blue, those sentences are our supporting details, right? So our main idea, your brain is faster and more powerful than a supercomputer, right? And our supporting details, we have one, two, three, and four, right? Those four things are our supporting details that tell us that our brain is faster and more powerful than a supercomputer, right? All right, so let's continue on. All right, so today's topic is working on main idea a little more and we're going to dig deeper using inferences all right maybe you've heard that word before and we're going to go over it all right so we have two objectives today and our first one is i can infer the main idea of a text using details from the text right and our second objective is i can convey in writing the main idea of a text with supporting evidence all right, we're going to work to do both of those things today. So when we think about anything when we're reading, right, we ask ourselves different types of questions or in an assignment or a test, you have different types of questions that are asked of you, right? And those types are right there, right? That is a question that the answer is right there in the story. You don't have to go any further than just looking, right? With keywords, those keywords would be who, what, when, where, how many, and does, right? Then we have think and search, which is the answers in the story, but you have to piece it together, right? 
And our keywords are find an example, summarize, compare and contrast. How did and retell, right? And our next one is author and you, right? That type of question asks you to use your schema or your background knowledge and the text to make an inference, all right? And those keywords are, what do you think? Make a prediction. What is the main idea? What is the author's purpose? Suggest another title. And why did the author write, all right? And our last one is on my own, right? That is where you just use your background knowledge, what you know, and it's, what is your opinion, all right? Things to look for in questions are usually, how would you feel if, or what would you do if, or have you ever, right? So for today's purpose, we are going to look at author and you, all right? Because I want you to be able to use the evidence in the text and your own background knowledge, what you know, to make an inference and figure out what the main idea is, right? Because in our list, one of our key words to look for is, what is the main idea, right? So let's continue on. All right, so what I have here is a bookmark, right? It's something to use as a reference. You can do it, you can make this on the top of your page, you can create your own bookmark, anything like that, all right? I will show you my example that I already made, all right? So I have, this is a very big piece of paper for me, um, my title at the top, which said making inferences, right? And then in my first box of my puzzle pieces, right? Because putting these things together is like a puzzle. You need all of the pieces in order to have your final inference. So our first box, I have a magnifying glass and underneath that I have read, right? So we read what is in the text and we look for any clues, right? The second one, we add these together, I have a thought bubble, right? And underneath that I have think. We think about what we already know, any background knowledge, our schema, right? And then putting those together, we should be able to come up with our inference and I have a light bulb. Because when we put together our background knowledge and the evidence from the text, we should be able to come up with an inference, all right? All right, so with our next little tiny thing, all right, we're gonna go do the steps of making an inference, right? The things that you want to do. And in this process, I want you to be able to say this statement. When I infer, I figure out something the author didn't completely explain in the text, all right? So let's look at our next thing. I have this set up as puzzle pieces, just like our bookmark, right? And the first step that I want you to be able to do, you can do this when you are reading a text, when you're trying to figure out the answer to a question, right? An inference is something that comes naturally to you, all right? but being able to break it down into these pieces helps you to be able to identify what is from the text and what you actually know and how they go together, all right? So our first puzzle piece is what are the clues in the text, all right? We'll have clue number one, clue number two, clue number three, we'll list them all out or highlight them or underline them if you can, all right? The second thing to do is activate your schema or your background knowledge and ask yourself, what do I already know about this, all right? Now, our last piece is make an inference and put it all together, all right? When you put your clue and your background knowledge together and you make your inference, does it make sense? Does it answer your question? All right, 
those are the simplest steps. You automatically do them on your own when you're reading or when you're in a situation, right? All right. So that is the basics of inference. All right. So let's keep going. Let's practice this inference. All right. Something pretty simple. What I want you to do is look at this image. Okay. Decide what is the main idea of the image. And remember, yesterday's lesson went over main idea versus main topic, right? Identify what the main idea is, and if it's available, what the main topic is, right? Go ahead and hit pause. Decide which statement is the main idea and which statement is the topic, all right? Your options at the bottom are Ponds are habitats with a lot of plant and animal life. Pond habitats. And a pond can be found in my backyard. All right. Here's our second image. Again, hit pause. Look at this really closely. And then decide what is the main idea of the image and what is the main topic of the image if it's available, right? So your options are most playgrounds are filled with equipment for children or swing sets or there are slides and monkey bars at playgrounds right so main idea of this image what did you get right i got ponds or habitats with a lot of planted animal life that is my main idea for this image, if this were a passage, right, if I could put all of the details in words and put it together, that would be my main idea. My topic is pond habitats, right? All right. Our second image, main idea that I found is most playgrounds are filled with equipment for children, right? And the topic for me would be playgrounds and that's not on here, right? All right, so let's keep going. When we think about inferencing, all right, think of an inference as an educated guess, all right, because we're using clues from the text and we're not making random guesses, right? If I looked at this book, right, the title is Everybody Cooks Rice, and the back, right, the back reads, Carrie travels from one house to another looking for her brother at dinner time. Each family invites her in for a taste of what they are cooking. Yes, everybody cooks rice and everybody eats rice. These commonalities do bring us together, a lesson worth repeating again and again. All right? If I just read the title and that little blurb that I read to you, I could make an inference on what would happen in the story, right? If I made a random guess and say, um, she's gonna go to the store and make rice, right? That doesn't make sense with what I read. The only thing I kept the same was rice, right? So continuing, right? When you think about inferences, right? Sometimes there can be more than one answer, all right? When you are making an inference, if you can justify your answer using the text, more than likely, your answer is perfectly fine, right? And then the last bit is making inferences isn't just about what the character is doing, right? It might involve answering questions, which is what we're gonna do today, such as what character traits does this person exhibit? Where is this person? Where did this event occur? How did this event happen? How does this person feel? And who is this paragraph about, right? Those are questions that we're not gonna answer today, but they are questions you can always ask yourself when you're reading, right? So let's keep going. Think about this, right? Have you ever solved a riddle, right? If so, surprise, you made an inference to solve that riddle, right? Here's an example. I am black and white and red all over. Okay. What do you think it is? The answer is 
I am a newspaper, right? And the clue that got us there was the word red with the A, R-E-A-D, right? Because you read a newspaper instead of the color red, right? All right, so thinking back to our bookmark and our breakdown of the steps that we do, right? Here's another visual of what you do when you make an inference, right? As a step-by-step, -step, your first thing is you read the text and you find your evidence, right? What is the author saying? What are your clues? Then you activate your schema. What do I know that helps me connect my knowledge with the text? That's what you would ask yourself, right? And then you would make your inference. What logical conclusion can I make based on the text and my schema, right? You use phrases like, I infer that. This could mean, I think that, I predict that, or maybe, right? And then you answer the question, why, right? Inferences help you understand the text more fully, right? All right, so I'm going to have you try making an inference based on a passage, all right? You have two passages. I want you to find the topic, the main idea, and some supporting details, right? What are your clues that got you to your main idea? All right, so here's your first passage, all right? Answer these questions once you read through it, right? What is the topic of the passage? What is the main idea of the passage? And what are your supporting details, all right? So let's read it. Did you know that giraffes are the tallest animals in the world? They are unique in other ways too. For one thing, they sleep only about 20 minutes each day and usually not more than five minutes at a time. They have to remain alert for predators. Also, every giraffe's coat is unique and varies in color from white to nearly black, depending on what they eat and where they live. All right, so the main idea of this passage is, this is allowing you a little bit of a hint, right? What is your answer for the main idea? Is it A, giraffes don't sleep very much, B, giraffes are unique animals, C, there are many animals in the world, or D, no animal is taller than a giraffe. All right, hit pause. Answer your three questions, right? All right, so what I found is my topic is giraffes, right? The whole thing is talking about giraffes. The main idea of the passage is giraffes are unique animals, right? And the details that help me to support that statement are that giraffes are the tallest animals in the world. They sleep only 20 minutes a day and every giraffe's coat is unique, right? Those three things put together say that giraffes are unique, right? If we tried to say giraffes don't sleep very much is the main idea of the passage, the rest of the details don't support it, right? Right, all right, so look at our second passage. This one does not have your options at the bottom, right? So you got to really think about it and infer your answers, okay? So same questions. What is the topic of the passage? What is the main idea of the passage? And what are your supporting details, all right? So this passage reads, homemade pizza is delicious. First, make the dough from flour, water, and yeast. After that, begin making the tomato sauce. Next, add any vegetables you like. Then, bake it in the oven. After a short time, the kitchen begins to smell delicious. Soon, it's ready to eat. All right, hit pause. Think about it. What is your topic, your main idea, and your supporting details, all right? All right, so. For me, the topic is pizza, right? And the main idea of the passage is how to make pizza, right? And the details that got me to my main idea are first make the dough, bake it in the oven, 
And then as I read those, I thought to myself, this is kind of like instructions. I've read a recipe before. That's what it sounds like, right? All right, hopefully those two passages, you got the same answers or similar answers, right? So that's the end of today, right? So today we learned how inferences can help identify the main idea of a text. We also learned the steps to making an inference and how to find the main idea when it is not explicitly stated, right? All right, so if you notice, today's lesson was fairly short. I did that because I wanna challenge you to do something, all right? I challenge you to read a book or watch a TV episode or watch a movie, anything like that, and decide what your clues are to a scene or a chapter or anything like that, right? And then what is your background knowledge that you're putting together to make your inference of something that wasn't stated, right? Practice your inference, whether that's reading, watching a movie, you can even try it in a social setting. So if whoever's at home with you, right? If something is going on or if they're not saying everything, right? That happens in everyday conversation decide what clues you're taking in and your background knowledge and how they go together and what your resulting inference is, all right? So it's the end of our lesson today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day.